Hey, how's it going, Chooms? John John the Wise here, and I got another cyberpunk video for you guys. This time, we're going to be talking about skills. This is part four of the series. So if you guys have not seen my other parts, make sure you guys go check out that playlist of parts one, two, and three. Now, before we get into the skills, make sure you guys join our Discord community. The link is in the description below. It is a Discord of cyberpunk fans waiting for you to join. We talk about the anime, the RPG, and other tabletop games as well. Also, make sure you guys subscribe to my podcast, Tabletop Cyberpunk, where I upload videos and I do interviews and I just talk about more cyberpunk with really cool people. If you really want to support this show, the best way you can do that is going to patreon.com slash johnjohnthewise. I truly do appreciate all my patrons and their donations, and I appreciate all of you for your likes, your subscribes, and for your comments. I really, really appreciate it. It helps a lot for visibility of this channel. And of course, make sure you guys join me on social media at johnjohnthewise on all social media so we can connect. All right, let's get into this video. Now, starting off with technique skills, I want to let you guys know that a lot of these technical skills are mostly the same. It's the same kind of concept, same kind of idea, but they are used for different types of technology. For example, the first one here we got is air vehicle tech. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you're working on some of the air vehicles that are out there, AVs are very common in cyberpunk. When it comes to air vehicles, you got to know how to fix them. And if you're going to be using air vehicles as a nomad or, or a tech, then you definitely want to put some points into this. But this is a very niche skill that is definitely going to be used just for repairing air vehicles. Next up, we got basic tech. This is the most generalized tech. Usually when game masters are not sure what to pick, they always default to basic tech. So if you have a character that is just maybe not a tech per se, but probably has some kind of idea of what they're going to be doing when they're fixing things, then you want to put some points into basic tech. It's, it's really important to have it. It's just basic te technical knowledge of devices, of vehicles, of anything out there. Next up, we have cyber tech. Cyber tech is what you want to take if you want to know how to identify and repair cyberware. It's also really important if you want to be able to take off cyberware of, uh, off of gonks and sell them, know what price they're going to be. That's all really important to have with cyber tech. You'll also be able to identify what kind of quality the cyber tech is, what brand, where you can get it, where you can sell it, and what kind of people will mostly want it. Next up, we have demolitions. Demolitions is a times two skill. Now, this is one of those skills that I had to really think about and try to understand. Because as you know, for throwing grenades in the game, you use your athletic skill, you don't use a demolition skill or anything like that. So what does this skill do? This skill makes you an expert in demolitions. I know it sounds easy, but really what that means is you can devise and make explosives on the fly. You can identify explosives, and that's really important in Cyberpunk. That makes you a very powerful character. For example, grenades do 6d6 damage, rockets do 8d6 damage. So just imagine what a C4 would do or a napalm device. If you have a high enough demolition skill, you'll know exactly how much explosives to use to bring down a building. And think about how important that can be if you want to take down a big corporate building like the Arasaka Tower was taken down back in the day. One of my players took demolitions, put a bunch of points in it, and they were able to drop off a bomb that they created themselves into a bathroom of a booster gang hideout, and that whole thing exploded to high heaven. Now, what did I roll for that? Nothing really. I mean, they made it. They put the bomb there. What are people going to do? People closest to the blast were vaporized and people further away took a little bit of damage. And that's because of the player's demolition skill. If they had a higher demolition skill, then they would have been able to devise a bomb that would have a higher kill effect, a higher kill radius, and everybody would have gotten rocked from that demolition. All right, next up, we have electronic security tech. This is another times two skill, and I really want to point out that this is actually two skills in one. It is electronics tech and is security tech. It's not both of them put together. It's two separate aspects of the skill. So what does that mean? That means with security tech, you can identify the type of lock that is on a door or the type of device that is used to keep you out of a safe or something like that. An electronics tech 
is basically on identifying a piece of an electronic. How does this work? How is it wired? How do I diffuse it? That's really important. And that's why this is a times two skill, because you'll be using this a lot in your games to get past barriers of technology that are trying to keep you away from important things. Now, as a net runner, this is where your advantage is. Most things require five minutes or at minimum one minute to get through things with electronic security tech. But net runners, if they're able to access a net architecture, they can do things that you take five minutes to do in three seconds. So that's where the advantage is to a net runner. This is a very common skill. A lot of my players take it. You want to have at least one person that has it because it's really important to be able to break through security and electronics and to know how they work. Next up, we got first aid. First aid is very important. It is a skill that is basically going to stabilize your buddies and to be able to stop the bleeding, stop the death, the death saves that they're gonna have to take every, every round. You can treat most critical injuries and treating and healing are two different things. A med tech will be able to do surgery and, and make sure that your critical injury is gone for good. But with first aid, you can basically band-aid the situation and make sure that the person that has a critical injury can survive the next few rounds of combat without having to go through that critical injury. It's very important. I think that somebody in your party definitely has to have this, especially if you don't have a med tech on hand in your party. One person having uh, a points in first aid is really important when it comes to combat. Remember, critical injuries are a snowball effect. As soon as one person gets critical injury, it's not far along for the other party members to get critical injuries as well. Next up, we have forgery. Forgery is a really interesting skill. It's not a very common one, but it is a great fun way to make narrative things happen within the game. For example, let's say you need a specific key card to get through a place or paperwork to get into a corporate building. That's where forgery comes in hand. Having the ability to forge a piece of identification that basically gets you through the building is amazing in a narrative way. And it really tells your game master like, hey, there's not much you can do. I have a eight in forgery. I rolled really high. The NPC rolled terribly in trying to figure out whether this thing is authentic or not. So I'm in whether you want me to be in or not. Next up, we have land vehicle tech. It's pretty self-explanatory. Cars, buses, trucks, motorcycles, anything that's on the land, it's a vehicle, it needs to be worked on, you want to take this skill. It's also really good as a narrative skill, let's say you have a character that has a background working in a body shop or something like that, it's good to have this skill in your back pocket. Next up we have paint, draw, sculpt. This is a very narrative skill, it's definitely something you want to put a couple points in just to make sure that your character has it as their back, if that is part of their backstory or part of their personality. As a game master, I might give two points to a character that if they if a player told me, yeah, my character is an artist, I'll give you two points just because, you know, it's not going to impact the game in a crazy significant way if you know how to paint, sculpt or do or draw or any of those things. But it is really good for narrative uh, moments in the game. Next up, we have Paramedic. This is a times two skill. Basically, it is first aid on steroids. There's a lot of mechanics in the game where Paramedic will be able to heal a critical injury where first aid can only treat it. And this is basically giving players the ability to have what the med tech can do, but slightly worse. And you got to pay a lot more for it. So this is definitely important if somebody's not going to take a lot into first aid. Maybe they want to split some into first aid and put a little bit into paramedic as well, just for the chance that they can completely heal a critical injury that doesn't require surgery. So... In the game, we have first aid, we have surgery, I'm sorry, first aid, paramedic, and surgery. These are the three aspects. Only the med tech can have surgery. Players can have points in paramedic and first aid. I would take a look at all of those things, look at the core rule book, look at your character, look at the critical injuries table, and uh, the section that says taking damage, and see what you want to do with the points that you have as far as mechanics in the game. 
Next up, we have photography and film, another narrative skill, much like painting, sculpting, and drawing. This is something that probably won't have a significant impact on your game, but it's a really fun narrative thing to have, especially if your character is like a media or something like that, or a private investigator. It's good to be able to know the art of taking pictures and how to capture the essence of the moment with them. Next up, we have Pick Lock. While electronic security tech, a times two skill, helps you identify locks, how to get past them, their weaknesses, actually doing the picking of the lock for something that's not electronic is why you need this skill. This is really important for any narrative characters that you know grew up on the streets and knew how to break locks and stuff like that. Uh, identifying a lock, knowing its weakness is one thing, but having the tools and how to use them is another thing. And that's where pick lock comes in. I think it's pretty important. I think it's really uh, something that a character should have, especially if that's part of their backstory. I think one of the party members having it is enough while everybody else watches their back. Next up, we have C vehicle tech. Pretty self-explanatory. If it's on water and it moves and it has an engine, then you know how to repair it with this skill. Next up, we have weapons tech. Weapons tech is really important if you want to know how to identify weapons, their quality, and how to repair them. This is going to be really important for folks that want to loot weapons, identify weapons, know how to repair them, and this is going to be big for a lot of characters. You're going to be finding weapons on the ground. People are going to be selling you weapons. You're going to find them in crates and all over the place, and you're your weapon's going to jam and break at some point as well. So having points in weapons tech is really important for at least knowing an NPC that has points in weapons tech is really important because like I said, without your gun, without your weapon, you're not going to be surviving the dark future for a very long time. Now that's it folks. We were able to get through all the skills in part four. I really appreciate all the support and love I get from the community. If you guys have any questions about skills and how to implement them, make sure you send your questions to johnjohnthewise at gmail.com. And James Hutt, one of the designers of Cyberpunk Red, and I will be able to answer your questions on the mechanics of those skills. A lot of these skills are a little bit esoteric and they require some kind of creativity to see their implementation. But I think that because cyberpunk is such a skill-based game you should carefully look at all these skills and make sure you pick some that are good for narrative design good for mechanics good for balance good for your party composition and most of all are going to bring you the most fun so enjoy thank you all for your support we'll see you guys on the next one bye